So hey everyone, uh, my name is Mike Tholfson. I work on the Microsoft Education team and I know many of you and many of you I probably don't know and today we're going to be talking about reading progress and that is our brand new and free tool that's part of Microsoft Teams assignments and it was really designed to help with reading fluency. And so the background, this is just one example. This can work with all sorts of ages, but as an example, many students need to practice reading fluency and reading out loud. And what is reading fluency? Well, that is reading speed, reading accuracy, as well as with expression. And those things together combine in what we call reading fluency. And many students have to practice reading out loud in front of a teacher or an adult. And many students that we've talked to as we've been developing the tool would say, I really don't like reading out loud in front of a teacher. It makes me feel nervous. The teacher's sitting there marking as I'm reading, and that can cause a lot of stress. Now, on the educator side, educators know how important reading fluency checks are, where again, they will give the student a passage, teacher has a copy of the passage, teacher will typically have a paper and stopwatch and pencil or some equivalent, time the student reading, and be marking down mispronunciations or omissions or repetitions and things like that. And that's a really time consuming process. That can be like five minutes per, per student. And you multiply that times 27 students or more, and that's a lot of time. And many teachers we interviewed would say, gosh, I know it's important, but I just don't have the time to do it as often as I would like. And then in addition, Many teachers will be tracking those results and there's a bunch of tools that you could track it with. Some teachers would use paper and then transfer it to a spreadsheet and then upload it somewhere else and can be a very time consuming process. So our team said, hey, how can we let someone like Ms. Peterson let Crystal and the rest of her class practice reading more often and not have to go through this process every single time and give insights to the educator on what's happening and what's the progress. And so that's where reading progress comes in. This is this brand new tool. It just rolled out globally in early September, and now it's just starting to get used. And so this webinar is to help educators and school leaders understand what it is, how it can be used. Some new features we're also gonna be releasing literally this week, there's more rolling out. And so that's what we're gonna be covering today. In addition, during the pandemic, this whole process has become even more difficult as you can imagine. And there was a very large scale Stanford University study that looked at reading fluency across, I think it was 250,000 students. And they've estimated that reading fluency in earlier grades is about 30% lower than before the pandemic. So now it's even more important for these types of tools because student fluency has fallen behind and that's a really hard thing to catch up. And what I'll do, I'm going to go into a deeper demo, uh, but what I want to do first is just show this video that has a, uh, a school that we worked with in the Comox School District, and they were doing this during the development, so they were early adopters. Literacy is so important and it's my job to help the kids grow in that and to see the value in that and to break the mindsets of like, oh, I'm just a bad reader. I don't like to read. I don't have to worry about other people just looking at me and staring at me. It's just reading to myself, sort of, but on camera. When I came across Reading Progress, I was able to say, hey, I've assigned a passage to each and every one of you guys at your reading level, I want you to record you reading this passage. I was surprised that when the whole class came back, literally within 10 minutes, everyone was already done. Having that recording, I'm able to spend ample amount of time to analyze. And instead of using my instructional time, it allows me to use my planning time to figure out 
how do I intentionally approach every student? The whole class, this is what I'll teach them, and maybe this one specific individual student, I need to address with him or her this specific area. Reading progress has really motivated a lot of kids to work harder and kind of gave them ownership of their learning. Well, as a mother and an educator, you know that the conference with the student is the most powerful piece. It's not necessarily them reading and recording. It's what you do with that reading and with that recording. And she's able to capitalize on that even faster now. It probably helps me be, be a better reader because I can actually listen to myself. And if I did say a word wrong or something, I'd be able to say it better than next time because I know that I said it wrong. Struggling readers, they struggle, so they avoid reading. And by avoiding reading, they struggle even more. Um, and so it's been really cool to watch how my kids are you know, reading more at home. They're more excited to read in the classroom. They have their personal goals that they've made, not me. And so they're excited to work. Coming from an administrative perspective is that this isn't just a classroom tool. Because we have so much access to data that this is a powerful tool to change the learning trajectory of a building. But watching her grow in her reading, it's been a, a joy for me. I used to love reading as a child and I wanted that for her. Now, that way you see at, I'm more confident. I'm less worried about it. I get worried about a lot of things, but reading now is one of the things that I'm not worried about anymore. I want all of my students to, to get to the point where they know what it feels like to get lost in a book. Favorite part is when I get to a really interesting part in the book and then I can't stop reading it and it's really fun. So just a background, and I'm going to go into a deeper dive, step-by-step uh, -step demo, but as a background on how this was able to be built, we worked with over 300 educators and school leaders to develop the Reading Progress app. And we also worked with a lot of top reading experts. And these are folks are listed on the slide here, but we've iterated quite a bit to be able to improve the tool. And we've had a lot of interactions with schools early on and educators and students. And so this is something that we actually sped up during the pandemic, the development of this tool. We were working on it before the pandemic started, but when the pandemic hit, we actually sped up the development. And so that's just you know background knowledge for people that this is not something that uh, Microsoft went into a closet and just sort of invented on our own. We actually worked with a wide range of people and iterated with feedback and prototypes in schools and teachers for quite a while. And the other thing that I'll mention, and I saw in the form, this is not just for early readers. This is not just for primary school students, for example. Uh, it's great for primary school students, but it's actually being used very broadly. We're already seeing middle school students you know, ages of 11 to 14. We're seeing non-native speakers, English language learners, special education. It's become very popular with world language teachers. So if you're learning, let's say you speak English and you're learning French or you're learning Spanish, those things are great for practicing reading fluently out loud. For example, when I was in 10th grade, I took French and the only time I would ever read out loud was in front of the class with my French teacher. And I definitely did not like doing that. And the last one that I saw some of the people filled the format is adult literacy. We're seeing this being used, uh, just for example, in Sweden, it's being used for adult literacy. There are some schools in the United States who are practicing with adult literacy. Many adults, as you can imagine, really don't like reading out loud in front of people as well. If you're 32 years old, you probably don't like reading out loud in front of anyone. And so this allows a non-stigmatizing way for anyone to practice reading out loud. The educator can get that video and you can get feedback. And so it's a great way to, to unlock new scenarios and maybe places that you weren't able to do that in the past. So I will share my screen. Give me just a moment here. I'm here in Teams and I'm signed in as the educator. So I'm in Microsoft Teams. This is our free tool. Hopefully people on this call know about Teams uh, already. Uh, if not, we've got lots of information to learn about it. So this tool is built into Teams assignments. So I'm in my fourth grade class. I'm gonna click on assignments over here on the left. And 
just like you create a normal assignment down at the bottom i click the create button and i choose assignment and this is our standard assignment form so you know i'll give this a title um this is gonna be i don't know how about um i think there was one about the dragon there i'll make another one called the dragon and i'll say you know please read the attached passage and the key part here is you go and you click attach and there's this choice here that says reading progress so you're going to attach this special reading progress reading fluency assignment type so i choose reading progress and now this new screen opens up and this is the place where you're going to choose the passage now you've got a couple options and actually one of these we've just rolled out literally in the last day or two it used to be you always had to upload a word document or a pdf file if you drop this down now you can actually choose to upload but you can also choose a passage that might be in Teams or stored on your OneDrive. And the Teams one is a really big benefit. So let's say that your school, all the educators, like let's say all of your fifth grade teachers, there's a set of passages or curriculum that you use all the time across your school. You could put them into a shared PLC or shared team or a staff location, and then you can go in here and choose from it. So if I go into Pineview staff and you know drill into documents, I can go and choose a passage from here. So now you can have a shared library of all the passages that you have in your school. Similarly, if you have OneDrive, you know, you can choose if you've got a OneDrive set of documents or a PDF, like here, here's a here's a passage I've stored on OneDrive. And we support Word documents or PDFs. So I'm gonna choose attach this document, and it's gonna upload and convert that into the passage here. So now here's that reading passage that I've uploaded from OneDrive. Now I can tweak it too. If I want to edit that passage, I can click edit. You know, I can go and I can, you know, I can change it if or somehow maybe you have a PDF and it adds the page number and you're like, oh, I don't want the page number to be in there. You can go in and tweak it and edit it. So that's really easy to do. Then you enter the reading level if you want. So some teachers have like Lexile levels. Some teachers might have, you know, level one through 10 or level A through Z. So that's an optional field. You don't have to enter it. Then you can enter if there's a genre, so fiction or nonfiction, that's common to want to track that. The number of attempts. So you might say, you know, I only want to give them three attempts when they do this passage. And so you can set that. Um, you can also set it to unlimited or one, you know, a cold read would be something like they're only going to try it once, but you can let them do it multiple times. Uh, there's a, a time limit. We just rolled. This is a brand new feature. So you could say, yeah, I just want to give them one minute, one minute time limit to read this or you know two minutes or three minutes whatever it might be uh, or no limit there doesn't have to be a limit and then the last setting here that i'll talk about is called pronunciation sensitivity and this is what i like to call the picky dial and so that means how would you like the ai to be listening do you want it to be more picky or less picky more sensitive or less sensitive so for example if I'm giving a reading passage to second graders or first graders, maybe I want to make it less picky, put it less sensitive. Um, if I'm doing adult literacy, maybe I want to make it more sensitive or middle school students. And so you have a chance to say, how picky do you want the AI to be when it's doing that comparison? And you can always adjust it afterwards. So you don't have to make a final call right here. And then lastly is require video or not. So you can turn this to off. And then it won't have video for the students. Uh, default is on, but you know you can choose that. And that will have the video recording aspect. And then you go and you'll click next. So then this will attach that passage um, to that assignment. And now it's ready to go, just like you'd have a normal assignment. I can add a rubric, you know, I can make points, I could assign it to my whole class, I could say just assign it to individual students, you know, certain students or not. It's up to you, but we'll leave it for all students. But all the same features that you have in normal assignments apply to this reading progress assignment. And so when you're done, you just click assign. And that gets pushed out to the class just like a normal assignment would. Uh, so I've got a new assignment here as a student. And here's the dragon. I'm going to say view assignment. I'm the student now. And I got this assignment from my teacher. So I'm going to open this up geography. So I'm the student here. And I have my passage ready to go. It's testing my audio. It says I have three tries left because I said it as a teacher. I said, hey, Mike only gets three tries. 
And the other nice thing we recently added is this swap camera button, because sometimes the student's device might have multiple cameras, like a webcam and a laptop cam and a other cam. So this by clicking this, it'll actually cycle through the cameras. So if it came up and, and it was showing, like, here's an example, some other camera, I was like, oh, wait, that's the wrong camera. Uh, and I click this again, I'm like, now it's going to switch. Oh, there's my laptop camera. That's not the right camera. So you click this and it'll cycle through. Now it'll cycle back to my, my main camera here. So that's something that's handy for students if they have multiple cameras somehow. So as a student now, I'm going to click start and it's going to give me a countdown. And here's the three, two, one. And now it's actually recording me. And I can start reading if I want. The other thing is, is we've integrated immersive reader technology. So in the upper right here, I can click the AA. And if you've seen immersive reader, I can increase spacing. And note when I when I open the immersive reader, it says paused, so it's not recording. So if the student changes settings, it's not actually recording them. So I can take my time. Maybe I want Comic Sans font, and maybe I want a black background, and maybe I want the text a little bit bigger. So you can go and fiddle around and get those settings. So when I close it, now it's recording again. So I go through, and I'm you know the physical features of a region are often rich in resources and Let's just pretend I go down to the bottom here and I say throughout history, people have centered you Neil know, fresh water. And then I click I'm done. And so what happens is very similar to Flipgrid, you have a video here that you can watch. So I can play it back and, and maybe I liked it, maybe I didn't. Uh, I can try again, I can re-record it. And so let's say that as a student, I see the video, hear myself reading, I'm like, yep. Yeah, I like it, that's good, turn it in. Again, very Flipgrid-like. And I say, use this recording. So now it's gonna upload and attach this recording to my assignment. So this is now uploading, again, feels kinda like Flipgrid there. And now it has attached this to my assignment, and then I just turn this in, just like I'd turn in a normal assignment. So I'll click turn in in the upper right. You know, you even get the nice little turn in celebration, just like you would normally in assignments. So that is how the student does that recording and reads out loud. So now what we're gonna do is switch back to the teacher view. So now I'm back as a teacher and what I'm gonna show is, I'm gonna show an actual, a real student who did a recording. She's actually the daughter of someone on our team. And so I'm gonna open up an, an assignment that I made a little while back and we're gonna open up Ashley Kozak right here. And so I open up Ashley, she did a recording uh, last week, let's say, and this is what happens. That whole recording is uploaded. And as a teacher now, I'm in this special speed grader view. So it looks like the right-hand side looks like the normal grading view. And this is the marked up part. And what you can see is the, the AI has automatically flagged things that are mispronounced, repetitions, self-corrections, words that were omitted. All of these things are calculated. Correct words per minute are calculated. So no more stopwatch needed. This calculates the correct words per minute and the accuracy rate and like the number of attempts, the number of words in the page. And over here, you see that auto detect is turned on by default. So again, that's the AI, that's the picky dial and the AI. So the picky dial is right here, pronunciation sensitivity, and I can change that, you know, make it, you can change it in real time and, and you can watch the changes. But some teachers might say, you know what, I just want to mark it up manually. I don't want to have any of this stuff. So you could turn auto detect off. So what you might want to do first is now I can just, I got the video right here and I just hit play. So let's just listen here. The study of Earth's landforms is called bicycle geography. So she said bicycle there and you can see that that was marked as a mispronunciation. And you know, I can, so there's, I can go and listen to the entire thing uh, so yeah, I could keep going, for example. Landforms can be mountains and valleys. They can also be glaciers or rivers. Land. But maybe you're like, you know what? I want to jump down here. This this word region was flagged in purple like a mispronunciation. So I'll click on region. And this is the special menu that comes up. I can mark it as correct. So maybe it got flagged and it's actually she read it fine. Or maybe she has a speech impediment and she she pronounced it. But the, the sort of the speech API wasn't able to detect it. You can also do things like jump to word, and this is really powerful. So I say jump to word, it'll jump the audio and video right to this word region. So I'll click this. Region, reg, or, so if she mispronounced that. She said region. I can also like, for example, it says, oh, she, she omitted these words for settlement areas. 
So I'm going to go to borders and I'm going to say jump to word. Borders, freshwater source. So she's also in. So she did a skipping of the word. She said borders and then she said freshwater sources and she she did a repetition where she repeated that word. And another one you can have is uh, self correction. So that was based on teacher feedback where they would say. Oftentimes a student will self correct, so they'll sort of catch themselves and then correct the word. And it, you know, I don't want that to count against their correct words per minute, but I would like it to be flagged so I can know. So if I go here and I say jump to word. Combin combination of factors that people use to do decide where they want to live. So you get a sense of how that works. And again, maybe here's an example here where you say, you know, she actually, this was fun. I could mark this as correct and it unflags that. And, you know, the accuracy changes. So this is a, a way very quickly to go through and do things like this. Another, another feature that we added based on teacher feedback was, hey, what if there's a, sometimes the teacher wants to be able to edit the text? Maybe they want to actually insert a word left or right. There's certain cases where um, the, the student inserted a word on accident, but the AI didn't pick it up. So they're like, maybe, maybe she said instead of people, she said, I don't know, pogo sticks. I, I'm making this up. Um, and and I insert that so it actually gets added right here. So you can tweak the text and you're like, um, if I want to edit that or remove it, I could do that too. So I'm like, you know, I actually remove this word. So it lets you do a little bit of editing on the actual passage as well if you need to tweak it. And then I can also add feedback like I normally would. So I could say like, hey, Great job, or you know, whatever I want to add, I can add the feedback over on the right hand side. Now, the other thing that is a brand new feature, this literally I'm going to talk about a little bit more later, but I, I do want to show it. Um, is that we just added this return report to student. So what that means is we can now, as of like it's rolling out this week, this is a brand new feature that's that wasn't in the original version. But we started hearing feedback that students really want to see their scores and how they did and see their you know accuracy rate words per minute so now we can return the report to the student and the teacher has the option to be able to change how that report looks like so by default we would return this entire report here to the student i call it the full enchilada view it's like everything but if i click edit the teacher has the option to say you know like I have seven year olds and all these numbers might confuse them so I can choose the simplified report and you can notice the numbers and percentages don't come back with that simplified report. And so that would mean all my first graders get this simple view, but they still get the report back. They can actually click on words, see how they did. They can listen to how the word should sound. Um, and you can choose it for all your assignments. So you can say, you know what, all the assignments moving forward. I want them to be the simplified report. Or maybe you have a real struggling student and you don't want to give them a report that has like all this stuff. You could say just this once, give this student the simplified report, but for everyone else, we're going to keep them at the, the full report, the full enchilada. So this is literally rolling out in the next couple days. It's, it's almost rolled out now. But then when you return it, you would return this just like you would a normal assignment. Now, the final part I'll show in the demo are insights. So I'm going to click close and we'll go here to insights. Now, in this case, you have all the insights for your class and I'm not going to show all the insights available because we have them for assignments. We have them for reflect and other things, but we also have reading progress insights. So I can click here on reading progress. And now we've got a bunch of insights for your class. So this is the whole class view. You can see average accuracy rate. So over here you can see accuracy, mispronunciations, omissions, insertions, all that information. You can see average words per minute. So I can see this data right here and I can hover and get a tooltip. I even get a challenging word cloud. So these are the top words that were being mispronounced in my class. So like enhance was mispronounced 65 times in the last few weeks. Here's another word so I can hover and get a sense. OK, these are the words that my class is having a challenge with. 
And then I have all of the whole student list at the bottom here that I can look at. If I want to look at a particular student, I can go and click here and maybe I want to choose Alex Wilbur. I'm going to drill on Alex examples right here. So average words per minute, accuracy rate, challenging words. So all of that information I can drill in on and I can even filter. So here are some of the filters for genre or reading levels or time frames. So a lot of really great information. You can even compare, you know, here's Alex compared to the rest of the class. All of these insights are automatically generated by teams when you use reading progress. So again, here's a, a story that I, a true story. When we were interviewing teachers early on, a real world example was I spoke to an educator who said, I'm the only one in my district who really knows how to use Excel. And so in the beginning of every term, she would make an Excel template that had some average words per minute and accuracy calculations. She sent that template out to 150 teachers those teachers would all use her template across the, the term and fill out the data. They would all send those 150 Excel templates back to her. She would manually aggregate them into a different Excel spreadsheet and then take that data and put it into a different tool. That's a massive amount of time. And so with this now, all this information is right here. You can also export it to Excel. So if you click the three dot menu, you can choose export to Excel and that will just export all the data right out. So that is insights and all of this is all available right now as well. And so this is something that is a really powerful component of reading progress. And so that's the, the sort of the end to end demo. What I'm going to do now is I'll stop presenting and I'll go back into my PowerPoint deck. So the most common thing that we've been hearing is that students are wanting to get more and more reading passages. And the fact that they could actually see how they're doing and see their accuracy and get that data and that feedback, many of them have never gotten it at that regular type of cadence. And so we're seeing students get excited to do reading fluency passages. And some teachers have said, I've been doing this for 20 years and I've never had a student ask for more reading fluency passages. And so it's being used in many different types of uh, world language classes. And so French five year guinea pigs, it says uh, Kaylin Dorlin, teacher from Canada is loving the tool. It's being used in Spanish. Another thing that we're hearing, and this is from Kaylin, shared this really powerful story of a sixth grade student. So not a young student, uh, a student who is in sixth grade, which the equivalent is about a 12 year old girl who came into class and was telling Kaylin, I'm a terrible reader. I hate reading. I'm really bad reader. And she was beating herself up and saying she was a terrible reader and hated reading. And so Kaylin tried out reading progress for the first time with her class and said, OK, everyone, I'm going to sign you this passage. Do it at home. You don't need to do it at school. Just go home and do it on your own independently. And this particular student did her reading at home, submitted it. And the next day, Kaylin reviewed it and she talked to the student and said, hey, you're doing fine with reading. Like, you don't have any problems. You're not a terrible reader. And she had done fine. And so the student started talking about it and said, I like, I don't understand why. Like, I always thought I was a terrible reader. And ultimately, they talked about it. And it turns out this student really, really did not like reading in front of people. And whenever she'd read in front of people like teachers, she would get really stressed out, not do a great job, would get the feedback that she wasn't doing a great job and it sort of snowballed into a negative feedback loop that basically told herself in her head was like, I'm a really bad reader. When she found out the feedback that, oh, doing this independently, I'm more relaxed and I do just fine, that was so exciting for her that she started asking Miss Dorlin for more reading passages and now she's excited about reading. So just that stigmatization aspect was a really big deal. So we're also getting feedback from educators. This is from a global set of educators from different people. This is one example where it says, this teacher went to her fluency binder and said, I don't have to spend all day Friday getting this done. I can literally get rid of this binder. <laughs> the graphs and data is just done for me. She does fluency twice a week and already had eight weeks of data. The data was so accurate for her students. 
They've used it with other classes. They've used it in Spanish. And she was even getting emotional when she was talking about this because, I mean, if you get a day back in time as a teacher, that's that's a day you can work with kids versus, you know, entering data into tools type of thing. We also have examples. Again, this is older students. This quote here was from South Africa and students that were in ninth, 10th and 11th grade. And they had never seen themselves read in many cases for the first time. And they could see their performance and they said, oh, I want to do this again. When are we doing this again? And it changed their whole perception of unprepared reading and the fear that they normally had. And this is an example of students reading accuracy scores changing quite a bit, 46 to 87 to 98. And we're hearing these educators that are able to do reading fluency checks much more often. Students get to practice more often and the students are enjoying it more often. And so it leads to these positive feedback loops. And so that is a very exciting development with reading progress that, you know, we hope spreads even further. Um, and then the other thing I'll cover is these recent updates. So I showed this one briefly. This is the number one request, and it came from students, which is, I want to see how I did. That used to be that teachers were screenshotting the results, and that's not very efficient. So now, as you saw, the teacher can go and edit this and then send that report back to the student. We're also working on probably in January, we're gonna have a, one more option, which is a customized report. So the teacher will be able to customize even more what the student can do. So that maybe the teacher just wants to send mispronunciations back and that's all. So the teacher will be able to tweak it even more if they want. On the student side, this is what the student sees. So if the student gets the report back from the teacher, they would see something like this. And what's great is the student can click on any word and say jump to word. So the student can jump and watch themselves exactly how they were saying it wrong or where they were skipping words or whatever it might be. But they can also then listen to the word. So we've wired up the immersive reader, the little read aloud. So if I say listen to word, our neural text to speech will say landforms. And so if the student didn't know how to pronounce, you know, physical, they can now listen to that word and hear it out loud sort of the right way. So now the student can benefit from that independently. This is the full enchilada version. So the student you know, can see the words per minute and their accuracy rate. But the simplified version looks like this. So if the teacher chose the simplified report, you see there's no numbers there. There's just the, the colors. And the student can still click on words and, and jump to word and listen to word. So again, this is rolling out right now. It'll probably take until Tuesday of this coming week to get fully rolled out, but but it's it's very close. The other one that just this one is fully rolled out now is the timed passage. I think this finished last week. So the ability to set a time limit is now completely rolled out. And then as we talked about upload Teams files in OneDrive, this will be fully rolled out by Monday or Tuesday. And Class Notebook is not out yet, but it, it will be soon. Someone asked about OneNote, so we will have a class notebook picker because some teachers put their passages inside of OneNote. Um, so that's something that you'll be able to pick from as well in the near future. And you saw me as I, I did the upload Teams passages. And then another one that I didn't show, but this just rolled out is speed grading improvements. So what that means is you can now have keyboard navigation to navigate words. So you can use your arrow keys to navigate words, hit the space bar to play the video, for example. You can use control arrow, forward arrow, backwards arrow, and jump to each next error. So if you don't want to use the mouse to click around, you can basically save time by using your keyboard. All of these are documented in our tech community blog, but they're also right here in this PowerPoint deck, which I'm going to make available afterwards when we're done.